Adams. Join me each morning from 10 to 11 as we talk all ag all the time. It's what we do. Agritalk news, weather, markets, plus expert opinion and analysis. Join the conversation. If it's about agriculture and it's important to you, then it's important to us. Agritalk. Let the conversation begin. Good morning and welcome to the Out and About Show here on 1590 KVGB. Do not adjust your radios, ladies and gentlemen. I am not Steve Webster, even though this is your normal Steve Webster time. Patrick Burnett sitting in for the vacationing Steve Webster, who will be back for you next week here on the Out and About Show. And every Thursday at this time of the month, it is the spotlight on what's going on in Stafford County. We call it Focus on Stafford County. Steve hosts the program. Carolyn Dunn is one of our featured guests today. Carolyn, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. It's nice to meet you. I've I've heard you on uh, portions of the show with Steve before, and uh, you know you're much nicer to Steve than I am to him, which is a very good thing. Well, he's good to me. Now, we, see, we, that's the thing. He's not good to me. <laughs> <laughs> we leadership Golden Belt alums have to hang together. Oh, maybe see, that's, if we would get you into the fold, then that would maybe that, help. That's where it is. I'm the out, I am the outsider here, Carolyn. <laughs> that's that's the whole purpose here. <laughs> the class starts next uh, June. Okay, fantastic. Then then <laughs> ma- maybe has to start early. <laughs> then maybe I can get along with Steve in the mornings. <laughs> that's what I need to do, Carolyn. Great to meet you, uh, Sydney Blanton, joining us today as well. Nice to yes. meet you as well. You too. And you ladies uh, bring a very great perspective on what's going on in Stafford County Um, here. I know you guys talk about economic development, um, and there's so many engines to economic development. It's something that uh, I don't think just the average person can understand very easily because there's so many different components. And you've been talking about a lot of those things here, Carolyn. That's so true. I think in rural Rural areas, we tend to wear a lot of hats a lot of the time, and it's no different in economic development. We've talked about how housing ties into this and is one of the, the I don't know, primary challenges a lot of rural communities have. We're working on that. Um, we work with students in developing entrepreneurial skills. Uh, we uh, worked with agribusinesses and have um, started a high tunnel uh, vegetable growing program. You end up doing a lot of different things, and um, I think it's maybe a way of looking at it is in rural development, we're working on community development just as much as we are strictly business development. A lot of things. Right, and so one of the things that we're now working on that we wanted to talk about today was our work with the Healthy Communities Initiative. This is really interesting when you when you think about it. Ultimately, you wouldn't think healthy communities and economic development as a bridge for each other, Carolyn. And you're going to talk about that in a little bit, I know. But uh, very interesting that these two do really actually go together. It's true, yes. Um, Long story short, people who are healthier are more prosperous. There's a lot of data to support that. And so as we look at building the kind of community that people want to locate in, they want to bring their business and, and themselves, their families, and choose to live here, you want to be in a place that's vibrant and healthy, not um, downtrodden and, and sick. So it, it really does make sense to address public health issues in the context of economic development. Well, let's talk a little bit about this initiative, uh, the Healthy Communities Initiative. Where did it get started? How is it sponsored? And, and what is the significance that it's bringing to Stafford County, Carolyn? Well, the opportunity has been brought to us by Kansas Health Foundation. They uh, selected... a about eight communities in the past year to um, come into a program that they um, sponsor. And the the philosophy behind it is that simply the generation of kids that is growing up now is the first that's not expected to have a life expectancy longer than their parents. Uh, we that's watched, a serious, serious problem. It is. We watched a video um, that was pretty compelling, and it was um, the question was asked to young kids, what would you do if you had five years more mm-hmm. in your life? 
And uh, so that's that's the challenge we're facing. We have um, people who are dying more and more from cr- chronic preventable illnesses. I think the statistic is that 7 of 10 deaths in the U.S. are from chronic illness. There's things like heart disease, cancer, stroke, diabetes. Um, and there are four behaviors that lead into those chronic illnesses, by and large. They are lack of physical activity, poor nutrition, tobacco use, and excessive alcohol. So those are all things that are behaviors. They're not genetic. They're things we can change. And they're but choices, too. They are. You know, and, and, and a lot of times, you know, so many, so many people think that the things are hereditary or I don't have a choice in this, but everything you mentioned is something that you as a person, uh, you can choose to be healthy if you so desire. Right. And at the same time, you know, we probably have all been exposed to educational programs that are encouraging us to make better choices, but it's not always so easy to do. I mean, 20, a generation of educational programs hasn't been doing the trick. So there's, I guess, a compelling thought that there's things that we can be doing to in, in address the environment that we live in. You know, it's not all personal choices. It's also, our personal choices are influenced by the environment that we exist in. And, um, well, I think our ultimate goal is to make the active choice, the easy choice. And that's through designing our community and our paths and our sidewalks and seeing what can we do to change that and make it easier for people to bike to school, walk to work, use active transportation in their daily lives that will increase their health. And that's just something real small, real easy that can be done, you know? And, and that was the next question was, you know, how does this, you know, mirror into a, a, a community? And just like Cindy just said, it, yeah, it comes down to simply uh, making that choice of walking to school, biking to school. These are things we all did as kids, but you don't really kind of start to see very much of that anymore. You know, that's interesting that you brought up that example. Um, at one of the conferences I was at last year with Kansas Health, they they introduced this idea of free-range kids. You know, we talk about free-range, you know, maybe poultry or, or whatever. But they said, you know, how many kids today walk to school um, the, the way they did a generation ago? We tend to be a lot more protective of them, less likely as parents to let them um walk around the neighborhood we spend more time programming them into activities that we drive them to or we drive them to school because it's it's perceived as safer but the impact of that in another sense is also not it's detrimental too because we've got nearly 20 percent of our um, youth population that is chronically overweight and if you look at Stafford County even specifically, breaking some of these national numbers down specifically to what's local, a third of our population is obese and another third is overweight. So all in all. Yeah, that's 63% in Stafford County, obese or overweight. That's a, that's a, that's an alarming number. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have to look very far to, to see that, um, you know, right here at home, we'd be at less risk of chronic illness if we simply moved around some more and lost some weight. You know, you, you mentioned that then, and, and that's, that is so very true. You know, I just saw an example the other day and this is in great Bend. This isn't even in Stafford County, but uh, you know, for example, the, the kids were kind of playing, but they were only kind of restricted to their own yard. And I pulled up and got in, got out of my car. And it, it was like the, the look of terror on these poor kids' face that, they happened to m- kind of meander into my yard, and one of the, the little children told the others, oh, this isn't our place. We can't be here. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I mean, you know, that's that's not necessarily the case. But again, it goes back to the day of, you know, times have changed a little bit, and, and that common trust of your neighbor and that common trust of the person down the street, it's, it, it's tough right now for parents. It is. And so we know we're not going to make – you know, wholesale societal change overnight, but there are some things that we can do to make it a little safer, a little more appealing to walk from one place to the other. Um, I think one of the things too that that we want to convey is that this isn't all about recreational trails and setting aside 30 minutes each evening to go for a walk, even though that's a good thing to do. Not going to discourage that, but 
we can also integrate a lot of physical activity in our daily lives just by, by choosing to walk. Um, to a nearby place instead of instead of drive. Um, we talk about this sometimes in some of our, our leadership meetings. How many of us will drive two or three blocks from home to the grocery store? Absolutely. Or from home to to work, and those are things that would be relatively easy to change if if more people were doing it, and we mm -hmm. felt the peer pressure to do it. That might also be a part of it. But there are parts of the physical environment that we'll be especially looking at that. Uh, can just make it easier, just make it more natural. It's the whole thing. It's got to be easy and, and it's got to be natural. You're listening to the Out and About show today as we're focusing in on Stafford County today. Carolyn Dunn, Sydney Blanton, our guests. I'm Patrick Burnett sitting in for Steve Webster. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about more about the Healthy Commu uh, Communities Initiative. And again, why is it important to economic development? It's a great bridge between the two, and we're going to learn more about it. Coming up after you hear this. Good morning and welcome back to the Out and About Show on 1590 KVGB. Patrick Burnett sitting in for Steve Webster today as it is our focus on Stafford County today as we're talking with Carolyn Dunn and Sydney Blanton today. We're talking about being a better, healthy community and uh, got some pretty alarming numbers about Stafford County um, here in our first segment but, Carol, I'm going to ask the question now. Uh, you've done a great job of painting for us the picture of, of why it's important to be a healthy community. But how does being a healthy community and economic development, how are the two connected? They are. Well, it's simple. People who are healthier spend less money on health care. They're more productive in their work. And therefore, they're more prosperous. Um. And then looking at the business perspective, businesses who have healthier employees spend less money on health and in, health insurance or health benefits. They have more productive employees and they're more profitable. And, um, you know, another element of, of the impact economically is that people who are more prosperous have more wealth available to invest in housing, growing a business or shopping at local retailers. And then the last um, angle that, that I'll highlight is that the number one reason people choose to live in rural communities by, by the, the studies that have been done on this, it's quality of life. And if good health isn't a part of quality of life, I don't know what, what would be. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't get much more part of it than that. So, so there's a, a good reason why these two are mirrored together. And Sydney, I'm going to ask you now. What, what are some of the things that you guys are doing in, in, in Stafford County, uh, since we're kind of focusing here on Stafford County? What are some of the things you guys are doing uh, to kind of bridge this gap between the two and, and to help make your community a little bit more healthier? Well, we've talked about the Healthy Communities Initiative with the Kansas Health Foundation. So we've taken that on and we have the Stafford County Healthy Communities Initiative. And we formed a leadership team of members from Maxville, St. John, Hudson, and Stafford. And so... People who are with the health department, who are nurses at the school, who are on city council have come together to really try to promote the quality of life in the healthy environment. And we have met and we have talked about what we've needed. We've held walkability assessments in each town. We've invited other community members and gotten their input of what needs to be improved, what routes people usually walked. And we've gotten students involved in our entrepreneurship classes that we hold in our after-school programs in St. John and Stafford, we've gotten the kids involved in mapping out their routes that they walk to school and what obstacles they have in their way and if they use sidewalks or if they have to use the streets. Um, and then walk to school day in Stafford, they've also asked the kids to mark their route to school and what they use. So that helps us and we're just getting together and we've decided to work on a master walk bike plan. So we're really wanting to focus on a plan that we can present to each city and show them what routes need to be improved and what little um, improvements we can make. Not just some big, huge project, but little things that can improve by marking the routes or fixing a certain street. Or And you said <laughs> something that's really important, obviously, to Mr. John Q. Taxpayer is, you know, something that is very simple and very easy because ultimately at the end of the day, when you talk about, you know, putting in sidewalks and doing things, obviously that gets a fine line politically mm -hmm. when uh, people want to know where are my tax dollars going? Right. Mm -hmm. There's only, there's only so many resources. We know that. And so that's why we're, 
receiving input from others as to what they think the highest priorities are. And, you know, there's things that we can be doing that really don't even cost that much money. Um, For example, uh, there are places that will designate one part of a a street as the walk-bike lane. It just takes the policy choice to um, prohibit parking in that lane and paint some stripes. And that's not a lot of cost. It's just another element of what I've been talking. We've been talking about conscious choices, but that's a conscious choice, I guess, at a at a policy level, a city level, as opposed to a personal level. Well, or talk, yeah, talk or, a little bit about the awareness uh, about this. I know you you've got a student from Stafford that is working on doing some awareness and is using social media. Uh, social media is becoming a huge part of you know our world and everyone's world. Sydney, talk, tell us a little bit about what this student is doing. The student from the Seed Center, which is a Stafford Entrepreneurship and Economic Development Center, which is kind of a career field through the high school where they can do entrepreneurship and take entrepreneurship courses. We got him involved and he's helped create a YouTube video for our Healthy Communities Initiative. And it's really promoting what we're doing and why we're doing it. And it really shows the need. And he's done a really good job with it. Okay. So again, that's just another great example of using today's technology and and helping things out with what's going on. Now, I know you guys got some events uh, coming up uh, for parts of Stafford County. Uh, Tell us a little bit about Get Active Kansas. Get Active Kansas is through the Governor's Council on Fitness, and they want champions from each county in Kansas. So we do have a champion in Stafford County in St. John and that's Lisa Cornwell with the St. John Hudson School. She's a nurse. And then I've become a champion for Stafford County just to work as a li- liaison. And I want to connect people from Maxville and Stafford as well. So I'm trying to find champions there if anyone wants to be a champion. And what the champion does is just hold quarterly events and try to create an active environment, get people to have fun, get together, walk for 30 minutes. Kids need to walk for 60 minutes. Um and we have an event coming up on November 11th, Monday. It's at 5.15 p.m. We'll meet at St. John in the city square. So we'll have maps there, and we'll all walk together for about 30 minutes on a designated route. Very p- picturesque setting there, too, in St. John. You know, that's a very beautiful plaza, very beautiful square. So that's something very easily for people to do. And as you said, you meet monthly. So uh, what if people want to get involved or they have questions, how do they need to get a hold of you, Sydney? They can contact me on sblanton at staffordecodevo.com. They can email me or they can like us on Facebook and message us. Okay. So we've been talking most of the show today about getting ourselves healthier. And obviously that's very important. It's important now we've found out to economic development. Let's switch gears a little bit because we're, we're just about out of time. We've got about four minutes left in today's show. And Carolyn, I know tax credits are something that is very important to economic development. And it's very important to the development of housing and what you're trying to do. Give us an update on how that's going right now in Stafford County. We do still have tax credits available at the 70% level. Um, What these are, Kansas income tax credits, um, those who contribute to Stafford County economic development can deduct 70% of that that contribution from their state income taxes. So by way of example, if um, someone contributed $1,000 to Stafford County economic development, which is a 501c3 charitable nonprofit, they would be able to reduce their income tax liability to the state of Kansas by $700, and they'd also be able to deduct the value of that charitable contribution from their federal income taxes. So this is a good way to support housing development, which we established is really critical in rural communities. We're going to be building um, rental duplexes, moderate income duplexes, um, with the proceeds. And this is a good way for people to be able to support that um, using the tax dollars they'd be probably spending anyway. They just kind of, I think in a sense, get to choose how their portion of the tax bill is going to get spent. So yeah, they talk about a great way to get active and a great way to help your community, but I got to save on your taxes. <laughs> I mean, what, what more better, better thing is there than that? I think it's a great concept. So we have um, partially sold out, but we do have some more available. If um, someone is interested, they should give me a call at 
3527 or email me at cdunn at staffordecodevo.com. Um, ultimately, what they'll do is they'll write a check to Stafford County Economic Development. And based on that, I will um, give them a numeric code, really, that they can use on their Kansas income taxes to reduce that liability. Okay. So again, if you do live in Stafford County and uh, you have any questions, obviously you can contact Carolyn or Sydney as well and take advantage of those 70% tax credits. You still have some available. However, you want to make sure you can take advantage of this before the end of the year. Absolutely. So uh, that's there, supplies are limited. Yes. <laughs> supplies are limited and time is limited as well. So uh, just to recap some of the things talking about today here on the show, uh, of course, Healthy Communities Initiative is one of the big things we've talked about. Uh, really, you talked about the four behaviors uh, to bad health. And, uh, you know, Carolyn, uh, you know, when it comes to lack of physical activity, uh, poor nutrition, you know, those are easy, easy things that people can change in their everyday lives that can make a difference. Mm-hmm. That's right. And you know. we'd love to have people um, be more involved with what we're um, doing. We have a survey that is on um, our fa- Facebook page, and this will help us um, determine what people think of all the things that we could be working on. What are the absolute highest priorities? So, um, Facebook, Stafford County Economic Development. Um, you'll cool. see the survey on there. And and we're also interested in why people think that one priority, say, fixing sidewalks versus, um, what's another good example? Scary dogs. Scary dogs. There you go. Absolutely. That inhibits people making the choice to walk too. So um, if we have a better handle on what things we should, we should address first, that'll make this all um, just go much more smoothly information is power so definitely again uh, head on over to their facebook page to fill out the survey uh, and again help these ladies uh, do more to help out your community and make your community healthier more prosper as well we're, we're out of time on today's edition of the out and about show carolyn sydney thank you very much for taking the time out and coming up here and telling us what's going on in stafford county today thank you for having us thank you patrick and of course steve will be back next week month here on the program it's the out and about show on 1590 kvgb coming up next cole rife has your kvgb noon report the latest in local news sports weather and all information and don't forget tune in this afternoon for sports day from four until five o'clock so again your out and about show today on this thursday abc news is next on K-